Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at an Epson Super Tank printer. This is the ST4000 and rather than using ink cartridges, you fill it up with bottles of ink and you get enough ink in the box to last you for about two years. And you can see the ink reservoir here. You can get a good idea as to how much ink is left inside of it. And then when you need more, you get a couple of bottles and just pour them in. And they've improved a lot of this product over what we've seen from a few years ago. So we're going to step through this printer and see what it's all about here in just a second. Now this video is being brought to you by BlueDogInc.com. They are a great online reseller of printers and supplies. They carry all of the name brands that you know and love and they carry them at the lowest prices in the industry. I found just about everything I've looked for on there is less expensive than anywhere else. We have a coupon code if you haven't ordered there before that will get you an additional 5% off. That coupon is LONSAVE5. I found them to be a great resource. I think a lot of you have tried them out already from our last video, uh, so definitely check them out if you haven't already, especially if you need ink and toner or a new printer. Uh, they got it all there waiting for you. Uh, they've supplied this printer to the channel for this review. However, they are not reviewing or approving the review before it gets uploaded. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own and they're going to be doing a giveaway of this printer, the very one that's sitting here on my desk. So when we're done reviewing it, uh, we'll ship it off to the winner, and you can enter that giveaway at the link you see on screen here or down below in the video description. So if you want to get a great printer for nothing, uh, sign up for that contest, and it might be yours. And if you want to buy one, they're on sale currently on the website at the time I'm recording this video as well. So let's get to it now and see what this printer is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Uh, the retail price of this printer is $4.99, uh, but Blue Dog is selling it for less than that. And the reason why the price is so high compared to other inkjet printers is because the cost of the printer is not being subsidized by future consumable purchases. So normally when you buy a printer for hundred bucks, you're probably spending that much to replace all the ink on it every time it runs out. And typically those ink cartridges maybe get you 500 to a thousand pages, depending on what you're printing. Uh, this one's coming with two sets of these ink bottles in the box, which they say are good for 14,000 pages in black and white and 11,200 pages in color. And then future ink purchases are very reasonable for the page count. Uh, so a bottle of black here uh, is about $18.95 and they charge $38.95 for the color set here. And that of course is about what you'd pay for a single set of ink cartridges that might get you a couple hundred pages. Here you're going to get several thousand pages out of each bottle of ink that you put in. And I found the bottles to be very easy to work with. I looked at one of the prior generation EcoTank printers from Epson and it was a little scary because you could slip up and pour the ink in the wrong tank or spill the ink. Uh, these are using keyed bottles uh, which will only go in the right slot. So you can't put the black one in the yellow one for example. And they also don't spill out unless they are actually plugged into the ports on the ink tank. So they're relatively mess free. Uh, so you can use them around a carpet with, uh, I think, a good degree of safety, and it doesn't seem to be all that difficult to get the ink in the printer. I did find, though, that it did a first cleaning and used up a lot of ink. So this ink uh, well here was filled all the way to the top, and you can see where it is right now. We haven't printed out all that much, but we have uh, consumed a good amount of ink just getting the printer set up. But I did find that when you were done filling the uh, tank here initially, there's a little bit left here at the bottom. And I suspect when I pour out the rest, uh, it will probably fill back up to that full state there. So very low overall consumable cost, but just a higher upfront cost to uh, basically cover the fact that you're not going to be subsidizing your uh, printer price with future cartridge purchases. Now this is a multi-function printer, which means that you've got a scanner built in. So you can run documents through the auto document feeder here at the top. It will take up to 30 pages at a time, but it can only scan one side of a page. So if you have a dual sided document, you're going to have to flip it over and run it back through again. Uh, you also have a flatbed scanner here as well. Uh, the optics on this one are 2400 DPI. That's the optical rating, which is very nice in a relatively low spec printer here. So that was good to see. It will scan to a computer or a mobile device. 
It will also send faxes through its fax modem that's in the back there, uh, along with uh, just making a copy if you need to. You can also receive faxes with this as well. Uh, so if you have a need for a fax machine, this will uh, do that for you. Uh, paper handling is not great on this. You've got a single tray here that holds about 250 pages. That part isn't bad, but what I don't like is that there's no manual feeder. So if you are printing out envelopes, you're going to have to pull your paper out, put the envelope in, uh, tell the printer there's an envelope in the tray, run the envelope, take it out, put the paper back in, and reverse the process on the paper setting. So it's a bit cumbersome, especially if you just want to print one envelope. And I was hoping to see a little bit more here for the price point. Uh, there is a pull-out tray here for your copies as they are coming out. Uh, so that's there if you want to use it. And if you don't want to use it, it'll just spit them out onto your desk. Uh, it supports Wi-Fi, of course, but you can also connect it directly up via USB to a computer, and you have the ability to plug it in via Ethernet. Uh, so my advice would be connect it to your Wi-Fi or plug it into your Ethernet network and then get all of your computers and mobile devices connected to it. I found the setup process for the computers at least to be very simple. Both my Mac and Windows devices could find the printer on the network automatically once we got it on the network. Uh, and then they were able to install drivers automatically and they can all print and scan without having to download anything. So that was a good experience from the computer setup perspective. But I did find the setup of the printer itself to be a little cumbersome. Uh, so after you pour the ink in, you turn it on, it cleans itself for a good amount of time to get everything primed. Uh, then it starts printing out all of these calibration pages and you have to really look closely at the paper to make sure you get everything calibrated properly. And I think if you have poor eyesight, that might be a challenging first step in getting this printer running. And I was surprised by how many steps there were to that calibration process. After that, you get it on the network. Uh, you can use the touch screen here to get all of that configured. Uh, and then it decided it needed a firmware update and that took another 10 minutes or so to get going. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it does firmware updates automatically, so you're going to have to keep up on that. Uh, printers are secure most of the time until some vulnerability is discovered and then you really need to make sure those firmware updates are getting installed. So just keep an eye on it. Uh, that was one thing that concerned me was that those firmware updates weren't going in automatically. But once all of that is done, it's relatively low maintenance here. It just works. I've been able to print to it from all of my mobile devices and computers and everything's been fine since the setup, but you should allocate at least an hour or so to get that initial setup done. So let's take a look now at its print quality and speed. We're going to just print out a single page here of some gibberish text in black and white. We'll click on print here and switch over to the printer and see what happens. Uh, this is happening over my Wi-Fi network now. Uh, black and white, it'll print about 15 pages per minute and we'll take a closer zoom in look at the overall print quality. Uh, this is the default setting, which is the lower quality print, which is also the fastest. Uh, so you'll get a slightly slower print in higher quality, but slightly better quality. But I found the text quality, even at this draft level here, to be very good. Uh, so we'll jump back to my computer here and we'll switch the quality to best and we'll see if that has an impact on its overall print speed. So we'll let that one run through here real quick and see what we get. And we'll probably see this page come out a little bit slower, uh, but we will see a better quality print here as a result. And this will probably consume more ink depending on what you're doing as well. Uh, I think if you're printing out documents for uh, color for presentation purposes, you'll definitely want to choose that higher quality setting. And as you can see here, it is printing a lot slower. I'm finding the performance over all of this, both in print quality and in speed, uh, to be that of a low-end inkjet printer. So even though you're paying a higher-end price, uh, you're really just saving the ink cost here. You're not getting a terribly high quality printer here for the high price tag. Uh, so now this page is coming out. I can see the text is a lot sharper and a lot darker compared to what we had before. But as you can see here, you're going to be waiting by the printer a lot longer. And so as you can see here, it definitely looks better than the standard quality mode, but it will print a lot slower. Now, one other thing you can do with the printer is print on both sides of a page without having to manually flip the paper over. So it does have a duplex printing feature, just not a duplex scanning feature. And if we go and run this document here, going two-sided in the normal quality, you can see uh, how long this takes. And I was surprised that it doesn't work as quickly as you think it would. So we're gonna let that first page come out. 
what it's going to do is instead of giving us the paper, it's going to suck it back in. So here comes the first side of the page, and now it's going to suck it back in. But there's a long processing period in between this page flip. So if we weren't duplexing, the next page would already be out. Uh, but as you can see here, it really stops for a minute, processes things, and then uh, runs that other side of the page back out again. So it's definitely going to be something that is not going to top uh, other printers that come in at this price point. Uh, but I think for small offices where there's not a huge amount of velocity, uh, this will work well, especially for high volume tasks. You'll just have to wait a little bit to get those pages out. So let's take a look now at color printing, and we're going to run this little sample document out uh, in standard quality. So I'm going to click print here and we'll see how long it takes for it to come out. And I like to do these in real time just so you can get a sense as to what your real world experience with print speed will be like. So here it comes, it's already starting to print. It's definitely coming out slower than the black and white document, but I think still adequately fast here. And here we go. Now I'm not expecting great quality out of this document just because it is uh, in the standard mode, but the text looks great. Uh, the color blocks down at the bottom here do not, though, look great. Uh, the issue I'm seeing with these is that they're not aligned properly, so maybe I have to run the alignment again. Uh, there's some banding going on as well. Uh, so not terrific here on the solid colors, uh, but maybe it'll do better with a higher quality print. So I'm going to run that now. I'm not going to make you sit through the whole printing process for the higher quality image, and let's see how it looks when it prints out that higher quality version. All right, so now we've got the high quality version and it definitely looks better. The photo looks a lot crisper and the colors are popping more. Uh, the text is sharper and darker and we don't have all those alignment problems we had on the draft version we were looking at a few minutes ago. So if you want uh, the best print quality here, obviously going for the uh, higher quality mode is important. It'll probably take about close to a minute to get this one page to print out but it definitely looks a lot better. So if you're seeing banding or alignment issues, uh, turning it into the higher quality mode, I think will make a bigger difference here. So let's take a look now and see how fast this scanner can work. We've got a couple of documents here in the document feeder. Now, once you get your printer connected to your computer via the network, it will show up as a network scanner in any application that supports it. And I've got the Windows 10 fax and scan app here loaded up, which is a default app that's included with your operating system. And if we go to new scan, you can see that we've got my Epson ST4000 on the network here available to us. I can click OK. It's going to connect to the printer over the network. And we're going to just select the feeder and we'll let it rip from here. And we've got a colored document in there, so I think I'll do it as a colored doc. And we'll do a higher resolution scan just to get a sense as to what a typical high res scan might entail. So we're going to click on scan here and that will get the ball rolling. Uh, the device has already acknowledged the request to get that scan over and we'll see that first document slide in. Now we are scanning at a higher resolution so this will probably scan a little slower than it would if you were doing like a 72 DPI scan. Uh, but as you can see here it's not terrible and it's going on in here. Just remember you can't scan the other side of a document while you're doing this. So the first page is complete. It's now bringing in the second page. Uh, the computer is acknowledging that it's got a second page here and it looks like it's scanning as efficiently as it can as it brings in the third page here as well. So altogether a pretty uh, decent performing scanner but again on par with other low-end MFPs in this space. And you can see here, once that final document makes its way over, we should see them popping up here on this machine, which is just connected over Ethernet. And there you go. Now, there's also a mobile app for iOS and Android, and this will allow you to access most of the features of the printer. So, for example, you could scan images into the app and then toss them over to other applications on your mobile device. You can print from your cloud services, for example. Uh, the printer also supports AirPrint. So if you have an iOS device like an iPhone or an iPad, uh, those devices will find the printer automatically without a driver needed. On Android, there's an enabler app that you install, and then after that, all of the apps that you use that support printing will find the printer and print to it. But if you are going to print photos, my recommendation is to do it through the Epson iPrint app. And the reason is, is that you can select the paper type and the print quality which at least on the iOS platform does not work through AirPrint. So right now we're going to select this picture of my daughter. 
Uh, I have it set to 4x6 already, but I'm just going to hit the gear icon here so you can see what the options are. Uh, so I can have it go borderless, so it'll print edge to edge on the paper. I've got a piece of glossy photo paper in there already. I'm going to set the uh, paper quality or the print quality to high, and we're just going to go ahead and print this out now. I'm not going to make you sit through the printing because this will take a while, uh, but we'll see what the image looks like when that uh, photo comes off the printer. Let's have a look. All right, so the photo is done printing, and it looks pretty good, although it's a bit washed out. Our cameras have a very hard time giving you an exact picture as to what the picture looks like here. Uh, so I'm going to zoom in with my B-roll footage now so you can get a better sense of it. Uh, the detail is definitely here. It really does look good from a detail perspective, but the color isn't so great. And part of the problem is, is that this is not a photo printer. Uh, it's a four color inkjet printer with a low end printing system. So what you see in this printer again is very similar to what you'll get out of a $100 ish cartridge printer. And you have to set your expectations accordingly here. You're not paying more for better print quality. You're paying more to even out the cost of ink over time. And that is how the economics work on these super tank printers. I believe they have one with more colors and that might deliver better photo performance, but this particular model is going to print photos a bit washed out but with plenty of detail. Now one other thing we've been noticing with the printer as we've been experimenting with it is that the ink takes a little bit longer to dry versus other printers you might be used to. It just could be the formulation of this ink uh, but whatever it is we're finding that on glossy paper and even on regular paper if you have a lot of saturation uh, the ink does take a little bit longer to dry versus what you might be accustomed to. So what I would do especially with photos is let them print and sit for maybe a couple of minutes before you pull them off uh, because I'm finding that it will smudge very easily, especially on the glossy paper if you're a bit too eager to handle your photographs. This one here kind of lost the corner uh, when I grabbed it off the printer a little bit earlier. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you'll be washing your hands quite a bit to get that ink off there. Now, as far as my overall recommendation here, it's a bit complicated because I think you have to kind of reset your expectations as to what you get for 500 bucks. Typically, when you buy an inkjet printer for $500, you're getting a beautiful photo printer that does superb graphics and photos and documents and everything else. Uh, this is not that printer. This really is the mechanism you'll find in a printer that you buy for 100 or $150 but it's delivering you the value proposition of a lower overall cost of ownership, provided you've got the volume to uh, make something like this make sense. So if you're printing out a lot of stuff at the office from one day to the next, this will over time save you money versus that same print mechanism in a cheaper printer that has very expensive ink cartridges. And it's also very inexpensive to replace those bottles of ink as well, especially when you look at the number of pages you get out of a bottle versus what you get out of a cartridge. That makes a lot of sense for a lot of people, but not for everyone. Uh, so just keep those expectations in check here. This is not a, a high quality print mechanism here, but it is a printer that is economical for people that the math works for. And if it works for you, I could recommend it. I think it's a good approach. If it doesn't, there are a lot of other options out there. And of course, our sponsor, BlueDogInc.com, has a bunch of options for you. So you might want to check them out and maybe ask them what uh, might be best for your particular situation. They are the experts on this. And again, if you want to save some more money, use my coupon code LONSAVE5 to get 5% off your first order. I want to thank Blue Dog Inc. for sponsoring this video and for letting us borrow this printer to review. This one is up for that uh, giveaway, so sign up for it. And if you win, we'll ship it right out to you. Until next time, this is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast. Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.